Today on this 2001 Honda CRV, we're going to be installing Roadmaster base plate kit part number 1528 3. First thing we need to do is come underneath and locate the front tie down plates on both the driver's and passenger sides of the vehicle. The other thing that we're going to need to locate on the vehicle are the existing bolts that are mounting into the subframe. Follow rearward on the vehicle, and we want to locate the tubular sway bar here. Just directly behind that, there are two bolts. We're going to be using the one that's centermost on the vehicle as our attaching point to the subframe. And we're going to do that on both the driver's and passenger sides of the vehicle. So we are going to want to remove this inboard side bolt. We'll just set those bolts off to the side for a minute. We are going to be reusing those bolts once we get our base plate attached. Okay, with the bolts removed from the subframe, we're going to go back to the tie-down hook at the front of the vehicle, and we're going to go ahead and start installing our base plate kit. We're going to take the main cross brace first, and this is going to set right in between the two tie-down points here on the vehicle. I do want to note that we want the flat part of the angle iron here to be facing towards the front of the vehicle. And then on the bottom of it, we'll have the holes that are going to mount uh, the remaining portion of the base plate kit. You notice at the ends we do have square holes, so we're going to be using carriage bolts to mount them to the tie-down hooks. We'll insert the large three-quarter inch carriage bolts. And then in between the tie-down point and the main cross brace here, we're going to add the 5-8 spacer. Now if, you, if the cross brace is a tight fit in between the tie-down points, you may not need this 5-8 spacer here, but on this particular vehicle we will. And then we'll follow up on the outboard side with the one by three inch block. Along with the lock washer and hex bolt. Then we're just gonna repeat that setup for the other side of the vehicle. So we wanna leave these carriage bolts loose for the time being so that the main cross brace can pivot back and forth until we get the main receiver tubes in place. From there, we're gonna take our half inch hardware the hex bolts here, and we're going to insert them from the inside of the cross brace down through the holes here in the bottom. We're going to do that all four hole locations. So now we'll go ahead and take the main receiver braces and go ahead and put them into position. Now there is a driver's and passenger side to the braces, so I want to point out the difference so it's a little bit easier for you to put them in place. If you look at the main receiver brace, if you follow towards the end, that's going to attach to the subframe. And look, you'll see there's two gussets welded on. There's a shorter with a heavier angle and then a longer one. We want the longer one to face towards the inside of the vehicle. And that'll help you line up the drivers and passenger sides properly. So we're going to take this section here. This is going to go over the sway bar and mount to the bolt that we removed earlier. The other end of the re main receiver has the two bolts on the plate here. These will mount to the two bolts that we just put into the main cross brace. We'll go ahead and put the bolt back into the subframe first. We're just going to again hand tighten that for the time being. Just going to snug it up just enough where it'll hold it in place, but we can still kind of manipulate it around. Go ahead and repeat that for the driver's side main receiver as well. All right, go ahead and repeat that same thing for the driver's side main brace as well. Then we'll come back to the front side where we had the bolts coming through, and we're going to align those with the holes in our main receiver. And the reason we left the main receiver, the reason we left the main cross brace loose is so that we can match up the angles of the cross brace with the angle on the main receiver. Once you get those set up, we can go ahead and put the lock washer and hex nut on the bottom. Start by tightening the bolts to the subframe first and then work our way forward. We want to verify with the directions the specific torque rating for each one of the bolts. See the end of the main cross brace has square holes to attach to the front tie down plates. So into those square holes, we're going to be installing the 5 8 carriage bolt. And then in between the cross brace and the front tie down points, we're going to insert the 5 8 spacer block. We'll be using the 1 by 3 inch block, lock washer, and hex nut. 
With the bolts torqued down, the, uh, the base plate installation is complete. We want to go ahead and make sure we put our safety cables on. We want to make sure we do install our safety cables. They're going to mount to the larger hole on the main receivers using the provided cable link. And then we can just go ahead and insert the front braces into the main receiver. Merge the two using the supplied pendant clip. And with that, that will conclude the installation of the Roadmaster base plate kit, part number 1528-3 on a 2001 Honda CRV.